The Lakers have been acres this season with these rotation guys all missing significant time over the course of the season. Rajon Rondo, 34 games the most, obviously. LeBron James, 15 and counting the most significant to this point. LeBron is practicing but did miss his 16th straight against the Suns. Likewise, Kyle Kuzma, Tyson Chandler both sitting out. More shots for Brandon Ingram against the Suns and here he is going to work. Smooth fadeaway right there. Can be a very smooth player. How about Devin Booker? This gets hung up in the air and decides to flip it up and somehow it drops. He had 21. Lance Stevenson gets Kelly Oubre with a hesitation, finds JaVale McGee, and Lance was just warming up. Lance will make him dance. <laughs> well, Lance will do much more than that as the highlight progresses. Ingram, a hesitation of his own, and finishes with the left. Josh Hart. Oh. Ooh, I didn't know he had bounce like that. It's a 14-point lead. Rondo. Oh. Oh, that's... Wow. We haven't seen that from Rondo. Ooh. This is Michael Jordan-esque. Eight points and 11 assists. It was a 17-point lead at that point, 12 at the half. Third quarter, Rondo fakes behind the back. Finds Ingram, who had 22 on the night. Avita Zubats, he had a night. Career-high 16 rebounds to go with his 24 points. All right, now is the Lance portion of the highlight. Here we go. Lance with the jelly roll. And then Lance in one corner. We're soloing. And then it's like an Eddie Van Halen. Oh, concert. look away. It's Staples. The look away, the solo, 17 points. Lance, Lance, Lance. 116, 102. Phoenix has lost eight in a row, 15 of their last 17. The Lakers improve to 6-10 and ten since LeBron went down with that groin injury. Ingram with 22, as we mentioned a moment ago. He's averaged uh, a little over 18 a game during this stretch. What, what have we learned about Brandon Ingram since he's he and some of the other young Lakers have had kind of an offensive freedom they might not otherwise have when LeBron's on the floor? Well, I think for Brandon Ingram, we've learned what we knew, that he's better with the basketball in his hands than without. Uh, and so as LeBron starts to work his way back into the lineup, uh, you know, we'll see Ingram continue to develop. How can he play with and without the ball boost? Yeah, I mean, I really like what Ingram's able to do. Obviously, a great score, go inside and go outside. But what I like is when he's playing the point forward and making plays for his teammates. You see right there with a great pull-up jump shot. He has a lot of skills, great length. Obviously, defensively can, can switch and, and guard multiple positions. But this corner three, if he can get that percentage to go up a little bit more, it makes the Lakers so much more dangerous when LeBron does come back. Right. All these guys, Kuzma, Ingram, even Alonzo Ball, if they can get that three-point shot working, they can be more effective come playoff time. And it sounds more and more like LeBron is getting close to coming back. Maybe we'll see him Tuesday night, maybe later this week. We don't really know. But uh, how easy a transition will this be for his teammates once he's back out there? I don't think it'll be easy necessarily, but I do like where the Lakers are in terms of LeBron coming back soon. Uh, not sure about Lonzo Ball's current status in terms of how soon he might be back. Right. But most of these guys are going to be back soon, right around All-Star break, maybe right after. And I like where the Lakers are in terms of getting healthy and having the opportunity to play their best basketball at the right time. Nobody in the Western Conference is going to run away from them, even if they stumble a little bit leading into the break. Um, this is not a team you'll want to play, you know, if they end up around six seed, you know, even if they slide up to five. I don't think you're going to want to play a healthy Lakers team in the playoffs with LeBron on the floor. I, I just don't. And uh, a lot of these guys that have found their rhythm and their presence with him out of the lineup, Zubats, Beasley's had some good nights. Lance Stevenson, Lakers are going to be in a good spot. Yeah, you don't want to see him. they got to get there first. True. You've got to make that happen. Well, unlike the Lakers, the Wizards record. Kyle Kuzma, JaVale McGee both out tonight for the Lakers as they face the Phoenix Suns. Of course, LeBron James has missed the last 15 games, and Rajon Rondo has missed 34 games this season. Here's Luke Walton ahead of tonight's matchup. Kuzma and... and, and and LeBron, they, 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 they'll play when they can, you know, they're not, uh, 
they're, they're not out with things. I mean, Cooley's tried to play through this last game, and we saw he just couldn't do, get the job done. So instead of having him limp around out there, let's get him healthy enough to where he can help our team win. And uh, we have other guys that are going to get oppor more opportunities now, and they need, they need to step up. And, uh, you know, we, we believe that they will. But it's, you know, there's, there's certain things you can play through and there's certain things you can't. And if you try to play through things that you shouldn't be, uh, you're more likely to get hurt and, and more likely the team doesn't get a win anyway. With that, let's welcome in Tanya Ganguly of the Los Angeles Times. Tanya, great to have you. Look, LeBron won't play tonight, but he went through contact drills on Saturday. Is there an expectation on when he'll return? Not yet. We're still kind of waiting to see how he does through those contact drills. Saturday was the first time Luke Walton actually saw him doing contact drills. It was the first time he did it with the Lakers. So um, I think at this point, it's just a matter of with groin injuries, you have to be careful. You have to see how it reacts to every step of the way. And the Lakers are going through that process right now. So no Lonzo Ball. Also Kyle Kuzma out tonight. No JaVale McGee. But to Kuzma, how serious is this hip injury that has him out tonight? Kyle Kuzma's been dealing with this for a little over a week now, and he's a guy that, you know, Kobe Bryant is his idol. He's a guy that wants to play through everything. So he was playing through it, and I think in their last game, they just reached a point where everyone could see that it was affecting him too much. Luke Walton told him during the weekend that if you're moving like you did on Thursday, I don't want you out there. So they came to that decision that it's only going to hurt him to be out there. Um, I think it's serious in terms of that because the Lakers have been missing so many guys and this injury situation just keeps snowballing for them but Kuzma should be better as he gets a few days off yeah the Lakers five and ten without LeBron is there a sense of disappointment in the way that this young core has performed in LeBron's absence I think that there's understanding because it's not just been LeBron they've been missing Rajon Rondo then they lost Lonzo Ball right when Rondo was coming back so the injury situation has just been really tough for everyone to go through I think Luke Walton I asked him today how do you address this so that you don't your young players don't give in to the frustration you can feel and he said that you address it you talk about it you make sure they're aware that this is something that can happen and hopefully they can get themselves past that but it's just been so tough I mean not just LeBron, which is a huge, huge injury to have, but they've had so many other pieces missing. And today with Kyle Kuzma missing, that's going to be a significant dent to their firepower. Certainly, it would be interesting to see how the Lakers play tonight and everyone's awaiting LeBron James' return. Tanya Ganguly from the L.A. Times, appreciate your time. Thank you. No problem. Hasn't just had a really good month. He's had one for the record books. Historic, 43 points, eight assists a game. 22 straight games with over 30 points. Only Wilt Chamberlain has had a longer streak. So when you see these numbers on your screen, the mm. first and most obvious question, Chris Paul back in the lineup, how will he affect this historic run that James Harden is on? Well, I think he'll affect it some from the standpoint, but he'll affect it positively because if you're James Harden, one of the issues you saw in game seven in that conference final last year without Chris Paul is he just got fatigued. Down mm -hmm. and he just didn't have the legs because of the physicality. Chris Paul gives you another dynamic playmaker and score. And that's something that this group has, has missed. Remember, James Harden, I don't know how long that streak is, but all those points he scored without having anybody assist on him. And I don't care how great a player you are. It, it just, it's comforting to have an all-NBA performer that can go out and carry some of the load. Plus, you factor in that these two guys have developed a great chemistry together after leading the league in wins of seasons ago. So, uh, I can tell you, James Harden might be the happiest guy on that Rockets team outside of maybe yeah. Chris Paul that he's back. I, I would have to agree with Greg. I mean, uh, James's usage rate is off the charts right now. I mean, when he's on the floor, they go through him. It's not like when he gives up the ball, he's actually making cuts, uh, UCLA cuts, coming off pin downs to get wide open opportunities. Er every team in the league knows exactly what they're going to run, and that's going to give him the ball, put him in multiple pick and rolls, put him in an ISO situation. Now you add Chris Paul back to the mix. Now he can get a breather, especially playing off the ball, and he can get some time you know, on the bench. But I think Chris Paul is, is, is not going to do anything but help this ball club. It's definitely going to help him. Now you bring another leader out on the floor, another pit bull, a guy that can defend and lead the team. And now James can go pretty much in scoring mode and, all, and doesn't always have to be a vocal leader out on the floor. 
Well, the Rockets are also a different team since Chris Paul was injured on December 20th. And by that, I mean new personnel. Just look at the new faces on this roster. Austin Rivers now in the mix in the backcourt. Kenneth Freed now in the rotation in the front court. Clint Capella out the next month as well. How will things change for these new players in the rotation as Chris Paul comes in because their roles will change a bit? You know what? I don't know that they will. I, I will say first, give Daryl Morey a lot of credit mm -hmm. to be able to go and get two quality players like Rivers and also for Reed to come in. Again, not that they're going to give you the same kind of production, but man, they take a huge load off having some veteran guys that aren't afraid of the moment that can make the plays that are necessary, right? Fareed can finish at the rim. He can help you control that defensive backboard, uh, and, and that's going to be critical, and he gives you some frontline defense. Austin Rivers is a guy that can get electric offensively himself. Uh, I think comfortable scoring. I think his scoring is going to go up with Chris Paul. Yeah. Because Chris is not going to look to score as much as James, and I do think that James is looking forward to this, in, in part because their goal ain't to just get numbers. They, they feel like they still got a chance to win a world championship if they can get everybody healthy, you think about getting those two new guys incorporated, and then when you get Capella back, how much more depth this group could have. Yeah, and, and the thing that we don't talk about with Austin, Austin Rivers is his defense. I think his defense on the defensive on the defensive side of the game, he's really showed his impact on this Houston Rockets team, especially when you lose the defenders that they lost last year. So I think when, when they went out, they got, got two veteran players, guys that know how to play and can play with anybody. I think when Austin first got there, uh, Coach D'Antonio would tell him, hey, be more aggressive on the offensive end, shoot more. And he didn't really understand that until now and understands that, hey, you know what, D'Antonio gives his players the freedom to go out there and make plays. And Fareed has been a big time plus just from the energy level. It's putting – Put him in pick and roll situations with James Harden. He's diving to the basket. He's athletic. He can finish at the rim. So both guys is a huge plus for this team. You mentioned Kenneth Fareed and GA. When you look at the past two seasons for him, he's just 29, but he only played 44 games combined in the previous two seasons. Why were his situations keeping him off the court when he was healthy? Well, I think first and foremost, look at the guy that's playing in front of him. You know, they, they went out and got that guy Jokic. Remember, they had also drafted Nurkic. So and they, had Millsap. And Millsap <laughs> that, and, and that they brought in. So, in essence, he had kind of – and I think it made sense for them because when you look at the evolution of the game and how things have changed, Fareed's kind of an old-school player, right? Mm -hmm. He's much more of a physical guy. You know, he's not a, a high-skill guy. He's more of a high-motor guy. And I, and I don't know that the motor was as high as it needed to be at that point. But I think a lot of times when you see it happen in the league a lot where a guy – you fall out of favor, but you get a second chance. And I think if you're Kenneth Fareed, this is an opportunity. And I mean, he didn't just get a second team yeah. chance. This guy got to go play with two of the very best players in the league, a team that has championship aspirations. So that in and of itself is going to motivate him as well to play some of his best basketball. And you saw in his last outing uh, when he went out and had that monster game. And when you look at the Rockets completely, because Kenneth Freed seems like a great addition to that team, as far as their chemistry is concerned, when you bring Chris Paul back into the lineup, he's a guy like James Harden is going to assist and help other guys get baskets. How does that change their dynamic? I mean, 12 and 5 in their last 17. Well, he fits. I mean, Chris Paul is probably one of the smartest players that we have in our game, and he's a great leader. He understands, okay, when he comes back, he's not going to try to overdo it. Coach D'Antonio is not going to come out and say, all right, Chris, we need you to play 40 minutes. They understand that, hey, you know what, he kind of he went out with the injury last year in the playoffs. And, hey, when you're dealing with a hamstring, you got to be very, very careful. So Chris knows, he sees that James Harden has been, been on fire uh, the last, what, 20-something games, scoring over 30 points. So he understands who he has to get the ball to. The problem is, hey, we just don't, he needs to understand that he don't got to do too much. But I think he's smart enough to know that. Certainly Chris Paul, a cerebral player yeah. in the NBA, if there ever was one. Uh, Russell Westbrook and the OKC Thunder facing the Milwaukee Bucks. And at the end of the first half, Westbrook goes down and is limping towards the locker room. So we'll try to keep you abreast of that situation. They just went to halftime, take another look. Looks like a collision with Giannis Senator Kumpo. And Russell Westbrook went down and limped into the locker room. Highlights coming up on the other side of this break. The Kings and Clippers, they played in the matinee, and so did the Cavs and Bulls. Both teams looking to get back to some winning ways, having tough seasons. That's up next. You're watching Game Time Live.